Hey guys, it's Jonas Helbert with Streetlight Realty, and today we're going to be going over home inspections, what to expect, what they are, and kind of do the breakdown of a home inspection. So let's get to it. First off, what is a home inspection? Well, a home inspection is a part of the process in finalizing a real estate transaction when a buyer would uh, hire someone to take a look at the property to make sure that the property that they are purchasing is in the condition that they hope uh, it should be. In other words, no major foundation issues, making sure there's no safety issues, and making sure all the mechanical items in the property are actually functioning. Now, there's a lot of um, misunderstandings about a home inspection. Uh, for instance, there are a lot of folks who think that if you're getting a VA loan, that the bank is actually gonna do a inspection of the property for you. It's not true. And it's the same thing if you do an FHA loan. A lot of times I talk to buyers and they're under the impression that FHA or the bank uh, is going to actually perform a inspection of the property. There are gonna be some things that uh, they look for, but it's not a home inspection. They're not there to purposely look for things, uh, they will notate things, peeling paint, um, if there's some exposed wiring, exposed drywall, if they see mold, if there's some uh, rather visible things, I guess, if you will, um, they'll point those out. But uh, by no means are they looking for structural issues. Are they, uh, they're not gonna be checking all the outlets to make sure that they're all grounded, uh, things of that nature. So you wanna make sure you get a home inspection. So do you have to get one? You do not. Should you get one? Absolutely. I would not recommend purchasing any piece of real estate without getting a home inspection, whether that's as a retail purchaser, in other words, you're buying a primary residence, or as a investor. Even if you're gonna be flipping the home, even if you're gonna be doing um, you know, a rental, whatever it may be, um, whether you're gonna buy it and relist it um, and try to make a profit that way, doesn't matter. If you're buying real estate, you should get a home inspection uh, to make sure that you know what you're getting into. So now that we covered the idea that a home inspection is optional and that you should get one, the next step should be, do you get a whole home inspector or would you hire out a, an electrician, an HVAC specialist, a plumber, uh, should you hire out individually or should you do a home inspection? I don't know that there's necessarily a right or wrong for um, for that. Most people do hire a home inspector. In other words, someone who will do a general overview of all of those core aspects of a home. But uh, you could uh, theoretically hire each part out individually so that you know that each one is being looked at uh, by a professional in that area. So for instance, hiring a plumber to look at all the plumbing, hiring a roofing company to inspect the roof, hiring an HVAC company to take a look at the HVAC unit. Um, you could go either way. Most people do a whole home inspector. Um, I would probably go that route. That's, uh, I wouldn't probably go that route. Uh, that's the route I've always gone when I've purchased a home. Uh, it's just a little bit easier. If you get a good home inspector, uh, there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to catch a majority of what there is to find uh, in a home. So uh, now that you're kind of figuring out what type of person that you would like to hire, the next question would be, well, where do you go about finding a home inspector? If you have a good a real estate agent, they're going to be able to make that referral to you because they should have a network of home inspectors that they've either used personally in the past or that they've referred out to previous clients or at the very least, uh, if they've had several listings, they should have some type of experience dealing with home inspectors on the listings that they have sold for their sellers. So uh, one way or another, a good real estate agent's gonna have a network of home inspectors that you can reach out to. If you want to go and shop for your own home inspector, which you would be entitled to, you do not have to use the recommendation on your real estate agent or from your real estate agent. Uh, and you could go to the National Association of Home Inspectors website or the American uh, Society of Home Inspections, and you could find a uh, home inspector through one of those websites or the NAHI and the ASHI uh, websites. 
they would have a list of certified home inspectors that you could then select, interview, and make a pick from. Also, you know, look at Yelp, Home Advisor. Uh, there's plenty of good websites with great reviews out there with home inspectors and so forth. Uh, so don't shy away from doing your homework. Make sure that you're getting the best home inspector that you can possibly get. After all, a couple hundred dollars can save you tens of thousands of dollars literally uh, in issues with a property. So making sure that you pick the right person is going to go a long way. Next step after you've found a home inspector would be to go ahead and get that scheduled. Um, now that also brings up the question of when do you get a home inspection, right? So typically you don't want to worry about a home inspection until you've actually secured a property and gotten it under contract. There's no point in spending, you know, four to five hundred dollars on a home inspection uh, before you even know if you and the seller can come to terms on what you should be offering for the home. Now, I've had some clients who think that is almost the reverse order in which they should do things because they don't want to make an offer because they don't know the condition of the home. Uh, so a couple points about that, you're going to be able to see most of the items in the home. You're going to be able to see uh, the HVAC system. You're going to be able to see uh, the electrical panel. You're going to be able to see the outlets to make sure that they're either two or three prong. Uh, there's going to be a lot of visual aspects of the home that you're going to be noticing as you walk the property. Uh, you should be taking a look at the windows, the roof, um, as you're trying to figure out what you should be offering. And then obviously once you reach an agreement with the seller, it should be under the assumption that everything's in good working order, everything's structurally sound, and there are no safety issues. But that's why you have the home inspection and that contingency period or the period of time when you can get your home inspection. And if things don't pan out or you don't like what you see, you'd be able to back out of the deal. So again, get the home under contract, and then you typically wanna get that scheduled within the first week. The sooner the better, because you're also gonna be starting the lending process, and if there's gonna be some issues with the home inspection, you would like to have, figure that out before an appraiser comes out, and then you get charged for an appraisal. So definitely get it under contract, get the home inspection done as quickly as possible, and you'll be well on your way to figuring out the ins and outs of the home that will hopefully be yours uh, within the next couple of weeks. So um, there's also some confusion about what's covered in a home inspection. So I wanna break that down. Um, I always refer to it as a general or a whole home inspection. And what that means is they're looking at the HVAC, HVAC, whatever you wanna call it, the electrical, they're looking at the plumbing, they're looking at the visual uh, surface areas of the home, in other words, the walls, the ceilings, looking for water damage, any cracks uh, in the drywall or the plaster. Um, they're taking a look at the foundation from what they can see. They'll be looking at the basement, you know, um, what else? You know, the roof, taking a look at the roof, making sure the windows are in good operating um, standards, and a variety of other items like that. Now, it is important to note this is what is known as a visual inspection. In other words, if there are, um, say, problems beyond the drywall, in other words, somewhere in between the walls, uh, a home inspector can't see that, so they can't guarantee that the wiring behind the drywall is in top-notch shape. Uh, you know, they, they just can't see it. If they can't see it, they can't make an accurate analysis of it, uh, which is why it's a visual home inspection uh, that's typical. You're not gonna always be able to get someone to determine what's going on behind a um, solid surface. Now, there are other aspects of the home inspection that you wanna be mindful for. Uh, almost every home sh will have the whole home inspection. You wanna make sure you get a termite inspection. With some home inspectors, this is gonna be a bundled package where included within their whole home inspection, they're going to offer uh, and perform a termite inspection. That is not always the case. You will want to ask. You will want to make sure that you also get a termite inspection. Same goes for radon. Uh, radon is an additional service. It's almost never included in what's known as the whole home inspection, 
but I recommend on any home that you're purchasing, you want to get a radon test performed. Um, the way I always phrase it is uh, a radon test just checks um, the radon levels in a home, which is basically a radioactive gas, uh, and it's, I think, the second leading um, cause of lung cancer. So my thought is, uh, if you're going to get lung cancer, you might as well be smoking cigarettes. So at least you can uh, theoretically enjoy it. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, other items that are not included in the whole home inspection are going to be uh, mold inspection. If that's something you want tested, uh, that would be an additional service. If there's like a pool, whether it's in ground, above ground, or a hot tub, uh, those types of things are generally additional. Uh, if you're on a well and septic, those are additional tests that you will want to make sure that you have tested, but not. But those items don't necessarily apply to every house. You know, a lot of homes are going to be on city water and they're going to be on city sewer and you're not going to have to worry about those. But if you are purchasing a home that has a well, that has septic, you're going to want to make sure you get those additional add-ons. Most of these things I would say are an additional, say between 75 to 150. Some could be more, some could be less, um, but they're well worth it. You want to make sure that you're um, fully understanding the property that you're purchasing. Sprinkler systems, that would be another elective thing. You know, you want to make sure those things get tested. Uh, if that's something you're looking forward to and you don't have it tested, you may not know that something like that could be broken. Now, um, I've kind of mentioned it in a couple of spots in this video already, but a typical home inspection is probably going to be somewhere between three to $500 for the basic home inspection. The add-on services like termite, radon, mold, pools, hot tubs, all those silly things are going to be probably somewhere between another 75 to 150. Some could be more, some could be less. Um, and it also depends on the size of the home and the scope of the inspection that they're performing. Um, now, the biggest thing and the biggest misconception of what you're trying to achieve with this home inspection is actually what items are you requesting? What items should you be requesting? Um, what would be considered um, a reasonable request versus an unreasonable request? Uh, I kind of phrase it in three categories. I think if there's um, safety issues, structural issues, or mechanical issues, I think it's okay to go ahead and try to work it out with the seller. An example of each of those, a structural issue you could have a cinder block construction in a basement where you have a horizontal crack running through that cinder block, which would mean it could be buckling in and you're going to want that addressed. You don't want to make that problem your problem. It's currently the sellers. They may or may not know about it, but hopefully something like that would be uncovered during a home inspection. And if it is, I think it would be perfectly reasonable to ask them to reinforce a foundation wall if it were to be an issue. Now, some cracks are not structural in nature, they're more cosmetic. If you want it touched up just because it looks ugly, that may or may not be something that would be considered a reasonable request. An example of a safety issue would be electrical splices that have electrical tape wrapped around them. They're not placed in the correct housing and they pose, say, a fire hazard. I, it would be acceptable to ask a home seller to make that correction. Mechanical issues. You go under contract on a home that has uh, forced air for heat, and then it also has central air conditioning as well. Uh, say it's the middle of summer, you have the air conditioner, uh, yeah, the air conditioner tested, and it's not blowing cold air. Well, you wrote the offer with the assumption that the home was blowing cold air and cooled the home efficiently or properly. It would be um, within reason to ask a home seller to make that repair. A repair does not mean replacement. So if you go under contract with a home that has a 25-year-old air conditioner and say it does work, it would not 
be reasonable to say, oh, this is 25 years old. I want you to buy me a new one. Because if it's not broken, it just wouldn't add up. I always like to tell my buyers, if it's not broke and it was your home, would you fix it? Most people say no. Um, sometimes in the moment they say, yeah, of course I would. Uh, but anyhow, uh, not saying I wouldn't write it up, not saying that you can't ask for it. I'm just letting you know what would be kind of considered reasonable and unreasonable. And I'll kind of circle back to the to those type of points and what you might be able to do instead. Um, but, you know, if you have a home with air conditioning and it's not blowing cool air, you could definitely ask that they have a technician come out, service the unit, replace the Freon or whatever it is that makes uh, cold air uh, so that it is up and operational and functioning functioning by the time you move into the property. Cosmetics are just a no-no. If you don't like uh, the carpet, it, that's not the time to ask them to replace the carpet. That's not what a home inspection is for. You've walked the property, you wrote the offer, you know what the carpet looked like. That's what's coming with the home. Now, what you can do for some of these items is if you don't like some of the cosmetic things, you don't wait for the home inspection, you know you don't like those items, go ahead and address it when you write the offer. If you love the house, but it's got stained carpet, uh, ask for that when you're writing it. Say, I will offer you $225,000 for this home if you give me a $5,000 credit for carpet. You know, you can do allowances like that. If you're walking the home and you guys notice the air conditioning system or the furnace appears to be extremely old and in need of replacement, you could write the offer saying, hey, these seem to be older, they're gonna to need to be replaced. I'm willing to offer you X amount of dollars below the list price, or maybe you say, I'll give you your list price, but again, I'm gonna need a housing, or not a housing, I'm gonna need a repair or a replacement allowance for these whatever, insert whatever issue you have with the property. That would be the proper time to ask for those. You don't want to wait until you've made the investment in a home inspection and possibly an appraisal or a loan application fee uh, or put down earnest money to find out the seller has no intention on replacing an old item of their in their home that may be functioning or old carpet. You know, you want to tackle those issues before you even get under contract. If those are that big of an issue or that big of a problem, it should be addressed before you even get this far. So I'm not saying you can't address some of these problematic issues. I'm just saying there's a time and a place and a way to do it to your benefit. Um, another alternative versus asking them to simply replace something or to give you an allowance or a reduction in price, uh, you could also ask for a home warranty. Home warranties cover a wide array of issues that could go wrong in a home. You can have roof leaks covered. You could have plumbing covered, electrical, appliances, um, the HVAC system. All of those things could be covered in a home warranty. So if you have some of those concerns, that would be yet another way to address it and try to buy some long-term peace of mind on that um, issue or whatever part of the home that you're not entirely happy with and you want addressed. So there's a time and place to address some of these cosmetic or aging issues. And then the home inspection is really reserved for, as I mentioned, safety, mechanical, or structural issues. And now just because a safety issue comes up, don't think a seller has to make any repairs. Um, for instance, there is a brand of electrical panels that are known to be fire hazards. They do not have to replace that. It is the seller's home. You can make the request. You can try to come to terms, figure out a happy medium, and then you can get those items resolved if you guys can come to agreement, but you do not have to come to an agreement, which would answer the next question of, what happens if you're not happy with the home inspection or you're not happy with the seller's response? The short and skinny of it is you can back out of the deal as long as you're still within your home inspection contingency period. You can back out of the deal. You should be entitled to get your earnest money back and 
you should be able to start the home search all over again. Now, there are many alternatives. I have had clients want to walk away because they're $100 apart. And something to think about in a scenario like that is you just spent three to $500 on a home inspection. Why would you walk away over $100 just to know now you got to put more time, more effort into finding another property that you may not be able to replace with the one that you're already under contract in, and it's going to cost you more to pay for another inspection versus just biting the bullet, being off by the $100 or whatever it is that you may want, and just push forward and get the deal done. You know, not all deals, unfortunately, are a win-win uh, solution. You may not be entirely happy with the resolution, but it could still be the best option. Um, that's a real world thing. We're all used to it. We don't always get 100% of what we want, but if we can get most of what we want, you should consider that a win during the home inspection period. Now, a couple quick highlights you can and should always get a home inspection. They are optional. You shouldn't view it that way. No FHA, VA, they are not going to inspect the home in the way a home inspector would. So make sure you get your own. Matter of fact, if you actually refuse uh, to do a home inspection, I won't stop you. But me personally, I will have you sign an addendum that says I strongly encouraged you to get a home inspection. Um, so that's how strongly I feel about it, that if you were not to get a home inspection, I will ask you to put it in writing that I've asked you to do that. I think it's that important. Um, you can definitely shop for your home inspector. You don't have to use your real estate agent's referral. If you have a good real estate agent who has great networks, chances are that's going to give you your best chance of getting a good home inspector. I've had plenty of clients pick their own home inspector that was a friend of a friend that didn't check X, Y, and Z and that it just wasn't their full-time job. So they weren't as good as some of these home inspectors that do to three to five of them a day, um, day in, day out, five days a week, sometimes more during the summer. Um, you want to get your home inspection done during the first week before the appraisal so that you could back out if you have to before more money is invested into that property. You know, whole home inspection may or may not cover termite. If it doesn't, definitely make sure you get termite. Uh, that's one of the most important parts of a home inspection. It can be one of the most costly repairs. Um, now, termites in of itself is not a scary thing. Sometimes it's old damage, sometimes it's very minor, sometimes it's very extreme and needs to be dealt with and can get very expensive. Other items to consider, I would always do a radon. If you're getting a house that has a pool, make sure all those um, luxury type items you have inspected, those are expensive investments, they're part of the property. You wanna make sure everything uh, that could be a costly repair has been looked at. You know, home inspections are between the three to five hundred dollars, and then you know, cosmetic things you're not asking for structural safety, mechanical. That's kind of home inspections in a nutshell. If there's any other questions that you may have, drop a comment, send me a direct message, reach out to me however you want. My number is 937 626 4181. My email is jonas at streetlightrealtors.com. That's uh, Streetlight Traditional Spelling Realtors.com. Jonas at StreetlightRealtors.com. Feel free to reach out to us on Facebook, Instagram, all the social media avenues. We're out there. If you found this video to be helpful, do me a favor, like the video, share it. If you think this is something that your friends, family, or anyone else that you might know could benefit from, and then if you like this video and you've seen some of our other videos and you think they are educational or entertaining, whatever, it doesn't matter, do us a favor, subscribe to the channel. Uh, it would help us out a lot and we'd really appreciate it. Thanks. Bye.